like, yeah, what the hell? As long as we're here, let's give me another one. Forgive me. A reading oh. takes a good deal of magic from me. I can only do this once a day. Are you sure? Rattle, rattle, rattle. Look at the coins. Scraping your hand with them. Oh, you can ruins in your face. Coins in your face. Do you want these coins? I only saw her blink one eye. Is she blind in one eye? I never noticed that before. The gypsy fortune teller is a very beautiful older woman. She has a look of pride and confidence about her. Her eyes are dark and fierce, but not unkindly. Well, they mentioned... Eyes plural, so maybe. Let's see if he talks about this fierce ass chin. John Lice Davies, talk about this man's chin of butter. Gypsy Davy shifts his gaze between you and the fortune teller from time to time. He obviously holds her in great respect. Well, not me. Can I, can I touch your chin? He's across the table from you. Besides, gypsies don't like to be touched. And what are these jalapenos hanging over here? Just like, whoop. Do you guys need these chilies for anything? Can I borrow one? You see a bunch of chili peppers, undoubtedly one of the hotter varieties. That's nice habanero. Habanero, anyone? I thought it was H.A., or maybe I'd just been doing it wrong. That's not the recommended way to add spice to your life. Are you insinuating that I should grab the gypsy? Oh, if I were younger, <laughs> I would welcome your touch and all that it promises. But now I must remain aloof and free to see your future. Who uses the word aloof seriously in a sentence? That's, that's, wow. What is this behind me? It looks like a fish. You're in the cramped interior of the gypsy fortune teller's wagon. Yeah, whatever. The clay pot holds a rare plant. How do we know it's so rare? What is it? You don't. Careful, this might be a plant. Best you avoid its notice. I don't get it. Don't touch. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get the odor of garlic off your hands? Besides, these braids belong to the gypsies. But, it's garlic. I handle garlic all the time. Garlic strings well, hang... Whatever. All right, well, I'm done here anyway. Goodbye. Bye. You say Bye. goodbye. Ah, you weary of talk. <laughs> Good. You are a guest with us tonight. Let us join the others for food, drink. I will show you the tricks I do with my chin. I hope you will enjoy the hospitality of my people. I can blow a wind from my you chin that can blow out a match from 50 paces. Hey! The gypsies seem to have gone all out to make you welcome in their camp. You've eaten a rich, spicy stew with no garlic, with fresh bread, and plenty to drink. Now it's time to relax and enjoy. I don't know. Guys who don't eat with garlic, I'm not sure if I can actually be friends with. Come, is she not beautiful? Ah, why do you hesitate? Go, join in the dance! Okay, tell me twice. That's... Sneaky. Are you going to do anything? You're just going to twirl around? Come on, dance, man. Do your little fairy dance. They touch it. Oh, hi. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And that night, oh, boy, did Sneaky Feet have a couple of new experiences. <laughs> into a comfortable position near the fire pit and sinking into a deep and dreamless sleep. You fucked a dog. You re Okay. Hey, and no nightmares. Why can't I sleep in one of the camps? All right, well, before... Uh, look, stamina's gone already. Am I overloaded? Is that what's going on? Okay. Health, uh, blah, 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 stamina, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, none of my stuff is up past 300 yet, except for my luck, which is great, but it doesn't look like it's changed in a long time. That's my theory. I think I'm just carrying around too much stuff. So next time we go to the inn, let's drop off a few things. But for now, it's next day. Let's get one last reading before we go. The gypsies just... Yeah, I don't, I don't mean take the wagon, you idiot. Go inside the wagon. Is this how this works? There we go. I had another dream last night. I never heard about your first dream. In that vision, you stood before a door. Every time you tried to open that door, it closed in your face. It's an automatic door at the grocery store. I see it every day. It looked like a doll. Suddenly, the door opened, and you entered. Doll? The vision ended. Okay, so I, I get a doll and it opens up a door at some point for me? Well, whatever. Tell about my past. Oh, I can talk about the uh, stuff I did, blah, blah, blah. You tell Ah, you tell strange stories, 
but I can sense that you speak true. You have lived the most exciting life. I do not think this valley will be the same when you leave. Aw, you're welcome. All right, let's see. Looks like she has a couple more things to say now. Visions, I can talk about Magda, the undead. Yeah, all right, let's find out more about Baba Yaga. There are many legends about that ogress. We gypsies avoid her when we can. She is dangerous to enemies, and she takes offense easily. I never did learn how she stopped she being a frog. Cut to the south. There is some sort of magic hiding the pathway there. Her only weakness is her love of food. Be careful if you need to approach her. Alrighty. How you doing, Magda? I am the leader of this pack, and I wish I could lead them from this valley. I have had troubled dreams of late, and the game is getting scarce in this area. Oh, that means I'm not going to be able to be friends with them for too much longer. Many are the kinds of the dead which do not rest. Some are harmless, some most helpful, but most are extremely dangerous. Some, like the Rusalki, oh. are victims of crimes. Others, like the Wraiths, are the spirits of criminals who cannot rest. But most powerful and fearsome of all are the Nosferatu, the vampires. No, it's the vampires. Wamp- Oh! Oh, I can ask about the Rusalki, so maybe I can figure out how, what I need to do to, like, help her. Maybe I can break her curse. Rusalki with the boobs. The Rusalki are the spirits of drowned maidens. Some are the victims of accidents, and others were the victims of murderers. They retain their physical bodies and try to drown all who approach them. There is said to be a Rusalka in the lake to the east. There is indeed. And her physical body is something to behold. Through kindness, but... I have never heard of anyone actually trying such a thing. Oh, no. Why wouldn't you? I just gave her some flowers. It was easy. Well, maybe I can talk to her later about, like, what I can do to break the curse. But let's... Wraiths! A wraith is a spirit who cannot... Oh, that voice. It's awful. I refuse to leave behind their possessions. And so haunt the sight of those objects. So now she sounds like a voodoo priestess from Gabriel Knight. You sometimes can see a mound of rocks where no rocks were by daylight. This is the burial mound of a wraith. Avoid it, for the wraith will try to draw the life from you if you get it. Normally they could, but now, baby, I've got the aura spell. Vampires! The Nosferatu, Blah. the undead, which feed upon the blood of living things. If a man is drained unto death by a vampire, he will rise from his grave as a revenant, hungering for the taste of human flesh. Oh, so in this mythos, the uh, if you get bitten by a vampire, you don't become a vampire, you become basically a zombie. Rise from the grave as a slave of its vampire creator. Oh. It too will be a vampire, but it must obey the commands of its master and cannot harm its master directly. That's important. Sometimes the sharer of vampire blood is not drained entirely by the master vampire. Thus... He can continue to live until struck down by a natural death. Then he will rise from his grave. So I guess that's how pure blood vampires are born. They get bitten by a little bit and then they die naturally, then raise up. So there's like three breeds of vampires we gotta we gotta worry about. Castle! The old rulers of this land, the boyars of the castle, were the Borgov family. They ruled this land for as long as my people remember. The last boyar was a strange man, so it is said. What became of him, I do not know. Only that the son left the valley in shame and horror. I never did learn a lot about the boyar, the Borgovs. Rumors that Borgov Castle was again inhabited, we brought our wagons to Mordavia. We thought perhaps the old boyar's son had returned, and we could trade with him again. Whoops, nope. 
We met with the gatekeeper, who said that the Borgoff family was dead. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was now owned by a distant cousin who promised to protect this valley as a true boyar. So we did some trading with the gatekeeper, but never saw signs of this Borgov cousin. Soon after this, the rain started to fall, and we were trapped here. Okay, well, good story. Yeah, I don't really care about anything you have to say except for the dancer. Can I meet her again? Ah, the one who danced with you upon your last visit? The one who is lovely, lively, and, uh, <laughs> more than a handful? She is my mate, and we wolves mate for life. Oh, boy, let's not tell him about that fateful night in the gypsy camp. Good thing we went behind the caravans. All right, jingle, 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 let's have another story. The cards have again been shuffled and cut. So reveal now the subject of this reading. All right, let's see if it's about me again. I like hearing about me. The Upside Down King of Coins. Oh, that was, um, the evil guy. This reading is of the ill-omened man. And now we shall learn more of his purpose and past. Wait, I remember we heard... We heard uh, the, the the guards talking in the castle and he said, Oh, I don't like that Atabees guy. He kept going, Atabees, Atabees. So, could this be Atavis? Remember him from Quest for Glory 2? Ooh, it's all coming back. So maybe Atavis is back to exact his revenge against me. That would explain so much. Queen of Swords. I forgot who that was. That's Katrina, was it? I think? The Queen of Swords. Hmm, interesting. Sometime in the past, this man has met the mystery lady of your present. He may have been betrayed by her, or perhaps he is the betrayer of the lady. Hmm. Oh. The next card shall reveal her influence. All right, probably the same selfish card, whatever that was. The... Marger? Marger? Ah, the magician. Ah, magician. The woman of mystery has magic also. One is the teacher of the other. Hmm. I wonder who taught who? The order of the cards suggested is the woman who was the master, and the man her apprentice. Oh. Because <laughs> I was thinking Adavis the knew the, uh, the powers of hypnotism he taught Katrina, but I guess not. Past. Let us learn now of the more recent one. All right, let's find out what's going on. The Page of Swords. Hey, that's me! Aha. Uh -huh. This is your own influence upon the man. It seems you were as important to his history as he was to your own. Not really. I didn't know him all that now, long. Let us see the manner in which you affected him. But I did murder him and crush his dreams. Ah, the devil, of course. Is that the devil? Death. The card of transformation. Death? Oh. You are the agent of this man's failure and loss. You altered his life irrevocably. It was really his own fault. Even if you destroyed him, my dear, he still influences the present. That the cards chose to reveal information about him shows that he is again a player in the game of your life. Ooh, spin the wheel. I love the clacking sound. Can we learn of this one, huh? Oh, more about Atavis? All right. I'm assuming it's Atavis. Eight of Swords. I really hope that doesn't mean I'm going to be skewered by Eight Swords. In the present, the Eight of Swords. This is the card of conflict and domination. The last card which crossed this man was also a symbol of bondage. He is somehow a prisoner or an unwilling accomplice of another. Let us see if the cards will explain further this relationship. Alrighty. The five of... gods? Girls? This is the card of conflict and struggle. Well, what is it? This man does not take his bondage lightly. The five of <laughs> girls? Is that what it said? Now, let's see what the cards show of his... Well, that's not fair. I want to know what... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. The chariot. Swing low. Sweet triumph and vengeance. Vengeance. There is a strong need to gain control of the situation. Of his life. 
He may seek escape, but escape is clearly not enough. Let us see in what way he may triumph. All right, before I look at the last card, let's put together what we know. So this, I'm guessing, is Adavis. He's in bondage to Katrina. He's seeking his revenge, but he can't because he's being held in check. Interesting. I wonder why that is. Ah, oh, the devil again. Of course. I'm gonna get a gasp. Oh, this time the devil is inverted. The meanings may differ, but this is a card that bodes no good whichever way it lies. I just think it lies. Your man clearly seeks release, but with that freedom, he will also seek revenge. Revenge, nice. Whatever or whoever binds him now cannot contain him forever. He will seek his revenge, and you will need to be wary. You will face him again in a struggle to the death. I already did that with him once. Now, let us reveal the card. All right. Yeah, who wants to place their bets? This is going to be the Void again. I'm not going to learn anything. The Void. Oh, the dark card of the Void. The influence of the Dark One oh. overshadows all. No more shall be revealed, nor shall things be spoken at this time. I thought the, the Void was just like a blank card. It's like, oh, there's a mystery, blah, blah, blah. But the, this it represents the Dark One. Interesting. The cards have spoken. All right. Well, that's all we can learn for now. So, bye. You say goodbye. May the wind be in your face and the hunting good. Thanks, Boris. Did you learn that one from Boris? Well, whatever. All right, so now we are—we have a lot to do now. So now we know how to sort of how to make an elderberry pie. Uh, we are ah, devil hawk. We need to <laughs> go to the inn to meet the gnome and the dome of Voy at night. So I think that gives us a pretty good idea of what to do now. Okay, okay. So we've done a lot of off-screen grinding in the meantime because there was really nothing else to do that day. Everything else we needed to do was done at night. So let's see what the fruits of my labors were, if anything. Not a whole hell of a lot. I, my intelligence somehow went up, which seems very against character for Sneaky Feet, but whatever. Vitality is up. My strength went up, though we didn't see it. I also spent some time doing... I did strength training at the Adventurer's Guild and I did some climbing practice. And of course, sneaking everywhere, and I'm still not even, well, a little bit close to 300, but you figure sneaking everywhere, I would have been all over the, all four games, BT dubs, whatever. Anyway, so we're back at the inn, and I've been playing the waiting game here. I'm waiting for the gnome to show up so we actually have an idea of what we're supposed to be doing without feeling like we're cheating. And speaking of cheating, uh, here he is. I found him. There he is. This is Punny Bones. You love him or you hate him. Most people hate him. Have a seat. Wait, no, better leave the seats here. But why don't you sit down on one? This show can't get on the road until you get off your load. So sit a while and enjoy yourself. Or maybe just sit. So, we'll... Let's, let's just let him do the talking. Let's have a seat and watch the show. Enjoy. Good evening, ladies and germs. A funny thing happened on the way to Mordavia. I got here. If you thought Baba Yaga was bad... I walked up to the innkeeper here and says to the guy, You know how lucky you are to have such a funny guy as myself staying here? The innkeeper says no, but if you hum a few bars, I can fake it. May as well laugh now, this act doesn't get any funnier. <laughs> I sit down here for a meal and order some soup. When the waiter brings it in, I says, Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. Waiter says, of course, that's the soup du jour. Am I going deaf in here? Or how can so many people sleep with all these lights on? All right, so you're seeing the problem here with Punny Bones. I to just the other day, and he said he had some good news and some bad news. What's the good news, I asked? You only have three months to live, said the doc. That's terrible. What's the bad news, I said. The doc replied, I'm getting married. I know I had an audience when I came in. So the bad news is that Punny Bones has basically lost his humor. He has no sense of humor, and he'll explain to us why in a moment, which gives us reason to go visit Baba Yaga in the first place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, you're not... I'm doing you a favor by talking over what Punny Bones has to say because it's not funny, but his voice acting is wonderful. You're not applauding, but you're not quite sure if you heard the punchline yet. 
did you think of my performance? Was I hilarious or what? What? Is this an inn or a cemetery? I've had livelier times at funerals. Some help you were. Couldn't you at least have smiled a little louder? Poor guy. It's nights like these that make me feel like an inept idiot and a lousy laughing stock. I'd make more money digging graves. But why? And get out of show business. Hey everybody! If you like what you saw, please hit this little subscribe button up there if you want to see more. That was bad. I don't even I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. <laughs>